open your ears, and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm the Rowan Fan Tim. I cannot stay out of the urgent care. You can't. I haven't been in urgent care in a really long time. Fuck you. <laughs> my kids, oh my God, my kids, oh my God. December 23rd. The Two baby. Before Christmas. The baby. The baby? I'm at the table fucking around on the computer making a beat or something. <laughs> and, uh, and Juice and Chi-Chi are watching TV behaving themselves. And my shitbird stepdaughter, little E, is in the bedroom with her baby sister. And all of a sudden I hear the baby start screaming. Now, she's 18 months old. She's not exactly a baby. She's they, a toddler. They scream anyways, yeah. I go in, I'm like, what the fuck happened? And I get this haphazard explanation that uh, the ladder to the top bunk, she was trying to get on it or something. But then it was crooked, and then her hand got underneath it. And I don't know. So she's screaming. I take her in the kitchen. She won't stop screaming. I try to look at her hand. I notice she won't stop doing this with her pointer finger. Oh, that's not a good sign. Does that look natural to you? Not for a child, no. Okay, so I'm trying to make like a C, like I'm doing a gang sign, with my thumb, middle, ring, and pinky finger. Mm -hmm. My pointer finger is going off at a 75-degree angle like it might be dislocated. Mm -hmm. That is what she did. And when I tried to touch it or see her hand... She would not fucking stop screaming or let me hold it. Oh, wow. So I did the smart thing, and I thought of what would an athletic trainer on the sidelines do? Just smack that shit. No, I grabbed the (laughs) finger, and I pulled, and I held, and then I gently released, hoping that if it was dislocated, I would have reset it. And then I went into the bedroom and screamed at my stepdaughter. And I mean, I fucking screamed at her like I have never fucking screamed at her in a volume and a tone she had not heard from me prior. It's a little bit of a wake-up call. Yeah, and then I picked her up, I grabbed her by the biceps, and lifted her off the ground, and got right in her face. And she's on a top bunk. So I threw her onto the top bunk, continued screaming at her, slapped her on the knee because I couldn't access her ass, and then I said, we are going to the urgent care, you will stay here. And then I might have made a dent on her bedroom door with my fist. Hmm. Did it occur that it might have just been an accident? I don't care. She should not have had the baby in there with her. She knows she likes to climb the ladder. She knows it's an issue. She's always just off in fucking outer space with her thought processes. I really think we need to have her evaluated for something. Okay. I just wanted you to explain it because to some people that might sound a little bit overreactive. To me, I've done it. Right, I screamed at my kids like that. It's just like, what the fuck are you thinking? Why aren't you thinking? Why aren't you paying attention? The problem is, is that there's always shit like this happening with her. She's always trying to wrestle with people, and she accidentally kicks somebody in the face. She's just too rough and careless, and doesn't know how to control her body. She's like spastic, hmm. and it just pisses me off to no end that she constantly exercises substandard judgment. When it comes to these situations. So I said, you are no longer again? allowed like to be seven. in your bedroom with your sister. She's like seven or eight. She's eight. She's eight. She'll be nine in a few months. Okay. She's too old to be making these same stupid fucking decisions. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, I couldn't remember how old each child was, so. So then I dragged the three of them to the fucking urgent care, because that's all that would fit in my back seat. And frankly, the other one's old enough to be left alone. My wife's fine with it, and I didn't want to fucking look at her. Are you <laughs> and then I calmly called my wife at work and left her a voicemail. To which she then showed up with Shitbird McGee at the urgent care. And we were all there. And thankfully they didn't think that my daughter, the baby's hand was broken or anything. They didn't even want to x-ray it. And uh, the the doctor, who was Indian, with a dot. Thank you. Come again. Which clinic was this? Well, it's the same urgent care I always take him to. I don't know which one you always go to. It's an Alina clinic. Okay, never mind. And, uh... The doctor said, well, if it was dislocated, it might not have been all the way. And when you did what you did, you probably put it back. So if she's still screaming or bruises or gets really swollen in the next two days, bring her back. It was fine. Okay. Perhaps I overreacted. That's good. But I gave it my full 100% effort in chewing a new asshole. Well, it's scaring her straight, hopefully, is what, it, it's what you're trying to do. Yeah, but it just goes in one ear and out the other with her. 
I found that uh, even Turtle, as she's been getting older, she's she's starting to pay attention to some of the stuff she's doing. So that's good. This one, not so much. I, I still think she has other issues, but. So now, a few days later, I find myself back at the urgent care because... Your kids are so entertaining. The Beast. Is pissing and moaning at me about Chi-Chi and a fever she's running. What do I do? What do I do? And this is the night before. In bed with a blanket, give her lots of water and occasional crackers. What else do you do during a fever? Oh, she's like, why didn't you give her Tylenol? What about the, her fever's 102? If it's viral and you give her Tylenol and it goes down, that's viral. You have to let it run its course. All you can do is make her comfortable. Right. You've paid attention to the other episodes where she's had similar issues. It's just, it's just that I learned being a fucking parent. And the Beast. In all her infinite lack of wisdom, who turns 32 today. Oh, today's her birthday? It's The Beast's birthday. Oh, fuck you. So, happy birthday, Happy you fucking birthday. Cunt. Yeah. <laughs> The night before, we're fighting, and I had to tell her, I wish every time that you call me and you say, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And then I tell you what to do, and then you come back at me like, you're not a fucking doctor. Don't tell me not to do this and that. I'm like, why do you fucking call me for advice you're not going to take, you stupid bitch? Yeah, Jesus Christ. She just wants to be fucking angry. I I think she might be autistic. She could be. That's a nice callback. So I said... Well, what you do is you take a rag and you put warm water on it and then you put it on her forehead. Lukewarm to almost cool water. And then the rag helps break the fever. How does it do that? It regulates the temperature in the head, which is where most of the heat escapes the body. Mm -hmm. The hands, the feet, and the head, but mostly the head and then the feet. So she like was mesmerized at that. She's like, my parents never did that. I'm like, my parents did that to me all the time as a fucking kid. And I can tell you as an adult, I've used it twice on myself. And it fucking works still, dumb dumb. I never put a towel on my head, but yeah, my mom and dad may wrap up in a blanket and drink just a shit ton of water. So there we are at the urgent care the next day, and I was on my way home from work to pick up the juice from school when I get a call. You need to come to the urgent care. I've been here since 10 o'clock this morning. It's Good fucking 3.30. It was 3.30. I don't care. So she's like, I can't do this, and they need to draw blood. I'm like, uh, what? Oh, my God. Yeah. What clinic did she take her to? The same one. It's that like, would... I mean, I don't know. I, it's a fever. I mean... Oh, but she's been sick for almost two months straight. Now, never mind that she continually takes them to the indoor playground where it's a fucking germ farm. Yeah. And we keep fighting over the difference between an indoor playground in the winter and an outdoor playground in the summer months where I take them. She says there's no difference. Even though... <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah, there's you. no difference. <laughs> right, because one is, you know, not during cold and flu season, and there's rain to wash away germs and regulate. Yeah, and I knew somebody that worked at those indoor playgrounds. She says, well, yeah, they do go through the tubes at night and put uh, you know, anti-bacterial spray. spray and stuff like that, but that doesn't work because no. it, it gets rid of it right away, but as soon as one kid goes in there, boom, contaminated. Yeah. So we went round and round with that. So I pick up the juice, and she's like, where are we going? How come we're not going to your house? I'm like, we we got to go get Chi-Chi. She's at the doctor. They're going to do a blood draw. A blood draw? And, yeah, my eyes were, like, wide as her eyes were. Because the, the thought that the little girl that screams like she's being gang raped just from a fucking throat culture, and not even the actual throat culture, seeing the fucking swab before they ask her to open her mouth, <laughs> you would have thought that they wanted to fucking amputate her hand while she was completely awake. I've told you that uh, Pubert's passed out from getting a shot. Yeah, yeah. pussy. <laughs> like, Man the fuck up. Admittedly, that was like five years ago. I don't know how he'd react now. Yeah, I know he gets nervous. Cause when he got his shots updated last school year, he's just like, shots? Like, yeah, and you're going to take him. Well, the beast. I knew she was, her mind was fried. She had no patience. She apparently must not have been too nice to the doctors. Her mind's always fried. Yeah. So she's like, I'm not really impressed with how fast they tried to get me out of here. I'm like, well, gee, you said the waiting room's been jam-packed all day, and two people came in with broken feet, and one they was given priority. crutches, and the other was triaged to the ER via ambulance. Of course, you're six-year-old or almost six-year-old with a fucking temperature and one swollen tonsil is not going to be an A1 top priority. Yeah, we took Puber to the hospital when he was about two or three. 
with a gash above his eyebrow from his the left eye. Yeah, you remember the that. table, right? Uh, the, the toy chest we had in the living room. Yeah, he he tripped over the vacuum hose and hit his head on it. And, uh, yeah, we we were there for three and a half hours. And every time those doors open, I'm looking. It's like who's coming in here? Ah, oh, shit! They're limping and all. They're gonna get in before us, you know. They're holding the bleeding dead was baby. Under control. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to do CPR think, on this obvious fucking corpse. I think there was like probably five people that came in. Two of them got to go in before us. Yeah. So I'm just gonna fast forward to where it's time for the blood draw. Okay. And the chick that was assisting, not the phlebologist that was coming to draw the blood, the chick that was assisting is the same chick that helped me with the screaming-ass baby a few days prior. <laughs> and I walked up, and I don't think she remembered me. I'm like, if you thought the other kid cried the other day from the ladder with the possible broken finger, buckle up. Because this one, oh my God, we might have to read her the riot act. This one is a cowboy. And uh, then the guy comes in, and uh, he's this very, very nice, very soft-spoken uh, African gentleman. I just want to paint a picture in your head. I don't care what country he's from if he's going to help my daughter. Yeah, what does it matter? Well, there's people that would hear me mention that he's African. And go, Why is there color you? Yeah, there's white people in Africa too, but fuck you. So he pulls out the kit, and I already knew explaining it to her was a lost cause because I've been doing it for 10 minutes, and she wouldn't stop crying. So when it came time, they asked me to help hold her. That's the one where they pricked the, fi- the thing on the finger, right? No. Oh, they didn't do that one. No, this is the one where they draw a vial of blood from her fucking arm. Okay. And she's never had one of these, and she's deathly afraid of needles. Oh, she's going to have to get over that. So I'm sitting in a chair like I am now. She's in front of me and trying to run away. (laughs) I have her by the left wrist, and I'm kind of trying to hold her, and that won't work. So I grab her, I wrap my right arm around her midsection and pull her into between my legs. And then I wrap my legs over each other to lock her in. And then they're trying to unbend her right arm to draw the blood. It took three of us to unbend a five and a half year old's arm. That wow. much adrenaline was running through her. That's why she didn't pass out that much. Right and through. she's screaming and crying, right? And she's screaming and crying so bad that two other nurses came in to make sure we weren't murdering a child. I was going to say, did you ever wonder, like, how many people can hear this child screaming? Well, at that point, they (laughs) heard her say, oh, you're hurting me. So that's, I think, why they came in. But by then, I've got my legs wrapped around her waist. I've got my left arm around her left arm and her torso hugging her tight. And we've outstretched her arm. And I'm holding her forehead to press her head against me so she can't move her body and oh, look. That's just making it worse for her. Yeah. yeah, well, fuck her. All right, she's a little bitch. I, I'm, I'm not saying you could have done it either way or you shouldn't have done it. That's the only way you can do it. But I just remember being in her position for other things like that. So Sack up, because the only way I could have done it otherwise was to fucking tie her to a board. She needs to sack the Knock fuck her out. up. Yeah. Well, to believe me, I wanted to. <laughs> so I'm I once we get the arm straight and I'm holding the other nurses coming, I'm like, all right, do your thing, do it, go. And she screams like, ah, ah, I'm like, it's almost done. It's almost done. And I start counting down 10, 9, 8. I'm like, don't look, don't look, don't look. Come on, come on, 6, 5. No, we're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. 3. Okay, stop it. Stop it. 2, stop. Okay, we're done. I was sweating. Wow. Profusely in the pits and groin area. Yummy. From the amount of effort and heat that my body built up. I was still wearing my coat. Mm-hmm. But still. Holy fucking shit. The effort it took to get one vial of blood. And like, when he got to the end, I'm like, is that it? Are we done? He's like, oh yeah. I'm like, no, are we done? Done? He's like, oh oh, yes, yes, we're done. I'm (laughs) like, good. I'm like, we only need one vial, right? Because otherwise you better go get me a roll of duct tape. And then we only need one. That's just crazy. And then they said she looked fine. Her, Her blood looked fine. The beast made me wait 15 minutes for the results. And then we left. Did they say what they were drawing the blood for? To check and see if she had mono. At the age of six. That's what I said. But the beast is like, there's a bunch of kids getting mono. I don't know. I didn't fact check her information because it's all bullshit coming out of her mouth anyway. It's probably bullshit anyways. Yeah. Everything that comes out of her mouth is a lie. And everything that goes in her mouth is a dick. (laughs) Or a cigarette or fast food. Yes, I just recycled a joke from This is 40. 
So that was Chi-Chi's bodacious blood draw. That was fun. And then the beast goes on for two days about how rude they were to her. And I'm like thinking, that's the pot calling the kettle black. You're a royal bitch everywhere. Yeah. And two, well, they tried to rush us out of there. I don't even think I've ever... Have I met her? What? Why did you save a bunch of bloody paper towels in a bag? Well, go do the responsible thing and throw it away in a garbage can at the airport. <laughs> Name that murderer. Ah, fuck. Don't. I don't got it. I'm doing a running motion because it's O.J. Simpson, and he was a running oh, back for the yeah. Buffalo Bill. God damn it. Did he throw it in the airport van from garbage? Yes, he did. Oh. Airport garbage. Bloody close. I didn't even know he got to the airport. Yeah. So, the beast it's just like, they didn't even really give us the results. They didn't tell us anything. And I just went back, fuck you, all right? I made her leave the room for the blood draw because the last time that I had to do a blood draw with the juice, when they pricked her, just when they pricked her finger, I made an angry face, and then on the walk out to the car, Dumblecock there fucking internalizes my facial expression and reads into it like I'm angry at her. I don't know why you're making that face at me. I'm like, I'm making the face in general, you dumb bitch. Because I didn't like that my kid was screaming right into my fucking ear as they're pricking her finger. But I don't see you holding her down. She makes me do the goddamn dirty work. And then she criticizes my technique. God damn it. Just take custody from her. God. She's so fucking inept, you know. And I hope that we won't be back to the Minute Clinic before February. Because that's what I told her the last time at the Minute Clinic is, well, see you in February. (laughs) Haha. <laughs> I'm playing the averages. But you I, were wrong. Well, that was the urgent care where we were at, though, not the minute clinic. So, uh, fingers crossed. But the beast doesn't understand how she keeps getting sick, even though it's cold and flu season. She's in kindergarten. She keeps picking her nose and touching stuff and then rubbing her eye in her mouth. And she doesn't wash her hands enough. And, and then the indoor playground. My kids haven't gotten sick at all this year. Yeah, well, that's because your kids stay in the house and play on their fucking iPads all day. Oh, but they go to school. iPads. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at. Oh, you're ending it here. What do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show. For the what do we call it podcast, I'm J Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. And that's the end. <laughs>